Ontario's police watchdog's been called in following a horrific crash during the morning rush that killed one person and injured four others. Good evening. A stolen car and a driver on the run from police led to mass destruction in Scarborough this morning. Investigators remain on the scene at Markham Road and Milner Avenue following a deadly six-car pileup. CTV's Mike Walker is reporting live and brings us the latest. Mike. Well, Andrea and Nathan, the SAU has invoked its mandate because they say moments before this deadly pileup, Toronto police attempted to stop the stolen vehicle for speeding just north of the scene here. A catastrophic collision involving six vehicles that claim the life of one man, who investigators say was driving this stolen Mercedes-Benz SUV that flipped over onto its roof. Loud bang, like I said, the guy was flying. Justin Wiley was involved in the collision. He was driving this Toyota Matrix and was stopped at the intersection of Markham Road and Milner Avenue around 6.30 this morning when he alleges the Mercedes SUV ran a red light. The guy that flipped over ran a red coming south and the guy was just trying to make a left-hand turn and just creamed him, went flying and hit everybody. Thankfully, I'm okay. Peel police confirmed the SUV was stolen from their area and related to a home invasion in Brampton. The province's police watchdog has invoked its mandate. The SIU says moments before the collision, Toronto police had attempted to stop the Mercedes for speeding near Shepherd Avenue. The driver took off and then it ended in this uh, collision. It was uh, at a high rate of speed. The SIU now investigating the actions of police and the circumstances that led to the deadly multi-vehicle crash. They say two cruisers were involved in the initial traffic stop. There was no pursuit. However, Toronto Police Service officers did attempt to stop the vehicle and the driver took off. Um, that will be a key part of what the SIU will be investigating. It just sounded like a big vehicle hitting something. Carlene Lee heard the violent impact from her sixth floor office and came racing down to the scene as first responders were extricating people from their vehicles. Three others were transported to hospital, including a man who was driving this minivan and is now in critical condition. There was a whole bunch of people in the road, in the way, and it was pretty bad. They were trying to pry open, like as you can see the vehicle there, they were trying to get at somebody in the car. Markham Road was closed between Shepherd and Highway 401, as well as the 401 westbound ramp to Markham Road all day, as two investigations, one by police and the other by the SIU, are now underway. Now this is a live look at the scene. As you can see, the cleanup is now underway. Heavy toes beginning to remove the vehicles that were involved in this deadly pileup. Investigators with the SIU have been speaking with witnesses. They will also be reviewing surveillance video. At this point, they are not releasing the identity of the driver who died in this crash. Reporting live, I'm Mike Walker. Nathan, back to you. Thank you, Mike. Still to come, details are continuing to emerge about the deadly shooting in Regent Park yesterday. We're learning more about the man charged in the violent incident, as well as the victims. Durham Regional Police have arrested and charged two more men in connection with the deaths of a Bowmanville couple early last year. Police say 28-year-old Aram Camel and his pregnant wife, 26-year-old Rafat Al-Zubaydi, were shot multiple times at close range at their home in February 2023. Last week, investigators announced the arrests of three suspects in the case. Today, they say 37-year-old Rocky Steve Stevenson of Ajax and 22-year-old Des Moines Blair of Oshawa are also in custody on two first-degree murder charges. Police believe suspects were not connected to the victims and that other people were involved in arranging the couple's murders. Students, parents, staff, and other community members are gathering outside a North York school this evening to honor a slain member of the faculty. 64-year-old Estella Wheeler was a grade 7 and 8 teacher at the TDSB's Afrocentric Alternative School. She was identified as the victim in a homicide at a Vaughn home last week. 68-year-old Trevor Wheeler is charged with second-degree murder. Community members are holding a candlelight vigil at the school to remember Wheeler. It gets underway at 6.30. Provincial police say they've seized $13 million worth of illegal drugs as part of a trafficking investigation across southern Ontario. The joint provincial guns and gangs enforcement team shared the spoils of Project Cranium today. Police say they uncovered a sophisticated criminal network operating out of the GTA and Simcoe County. In January, they executed 16 search warrants in Toronto. 
The uncovered 173 kilograms of suspected crystal meth, 56 kilos of suspected cocaine, and other drugs, cash, and weapons. Nine suspects face a combined 44 charges. Our online team has a full breakdown of the investigation and the trail of evidence that prompted the launch of Project Cranium. All the details are at ctvnewstoronto.ca. Well, we're not even halfway through March yet, but it definitely feels like spring. It's a gorgeous day in the GTA with plenty of sunshine, and some people are taking advantage of it. CTV Siobhan Morris is live outside, hopefully also one of those people taking advantage of it. Siobhan. Nathan, I have to tell you, I've been debating the last little while whether I should put a coat on. I'm in a T-shirt. I'm going to take full advantage just to say I am wearing a T-shirt in March. Lots of other people, again, trying to take advantage of all this warm weather and sunshine before it slips away. This is certainly not what we're used to for mid-March. Pedaling as fast as you can, no coat in sight. Perfecting bubble making in a light breeze. Indulging in frosty treats while it's still technically winter. I mean, it's a bit disconcerting, but it's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> it's really nice to be out at the beach eating ice cream. It feels like it's a spring day, like almost a summer day, actually. It feels like May. My son gets to go out and play and not be indoors. Um, <laughs> and the pets love it too, right? Toronto is flirting with a record dating back to 1990. This kind of warmth gets rave reviews from the kids and parents too. We do one big trip out for March break and this is it. So we tried to go to Hyde Park and it was, it was crazy. We couldn't get parking, but this is so much nicer by the lake. Even indoor activities like playing restaurant or flipping bottles move into the open air. A chance to people watch while soaking up the vitamin D. Especially in the winters, like some days, you know, depressed days and uh, it's a beautiful sunny day. Revving up for the warmer season to come. This is my first ride in five months, so I'm enjoying it and I want to enjoy it every day. I hope it doesn't get cold again. A wish that fickle March just can't make come true. Well, tomorrow clouds move in. We are expecting still warmer than usual temperatures, but by the weekend, there's the possibility of flurries returning. Reporting live, I'm Siobhan Morris. Andrea and Nathan, back to you. And thanks, Siobhan. Looking good in those short sleeves. Well, more news in a moment, but first, here's a look at the sunshine at this hour. Yep, it's still out. Jessica Smith is here with a look at the current conditions. Jess, you're also taking advantage of the weather today. Listen, we, we missed the record by about 1.3 degrees, Andrea, but I don't think it matters to most of the folks down here. We've been out here for a few hours. People are really enjoying it. There's like a Night at the Roxbury playlist going on behind me. Everyone's really enjoying their time outside. It's 20 degrees. That was our high for today. We didn't quite get to that record, but it doesn't really matter, right? We hold on to a lot of the warmth as we head through the evening as well. The ridge of high pressure keeping the sky nice and clear as we head through the second half of our day and in towards the evening. Beautiful to get out for a walk. We're still at 19 through Windsor, 19 in Niagara, 18 in Hamilton a little cooler the further east you go but to be honest it doesn't really matter it's still super nice outside now temperature wise through the island we're at about 18 Pearson 17 a little more cloud cover there a west northwesterly wind adding a little freshness to the air that sunset today right around 7 22 p.m. and it is going to get a little cooler as we head through the evening we're also keeping a close eye on a system that is south of the border set to bring rain and the risk of thunderstorms heading into the day tomorrow coming up I'll have a full look at your long-range forecast but for now I'll send things back inside I'm going to keep dancing to the playlist Thank you, Jess. It was a case of dangerous driving. A car left the road and flew into a crowd of pedestrians, killing a university student on Boxing Day 2021. Today, the 24-year-old accused man has been sentenced to another year in jail. CTV's Sean Lethong is at the University Avenue Courts tonight and has the details. Sean. Well, Andrea and Nathan, the family of the victim were particularly upset with this ruling today because they had wanted more. Also, with knowing the fact that the man who was behind the wheel, a man by the name of DeMar Kerr, was already facing four counts of dangerous driving when this collision happened. As Justice Jillian Roberts read her sentence to DeMar Kerr, there were loud sobs from the victim's family. Charged with one count of dangerous driving caused death and five counts of dangerous driving caused bodily harm, the message heard in court today was... Mr. Kerr has one year left to serve on his sentence. It was 2 p.m. Boxing Day 2021. Then 22-year-old Damar Kerr driving food delivery. Heading west on Richmond Street, Kerr accelerated his Kia to 79 kilometers an hour, nearly twice the posted limit. At the intersection with Young Street, a white Hyundai made an illegal left turn. 
Kerr's vehicle collided into the side of the Hyundai, flipping onto its side and onto the sidewalk on the southwest side, killing an 18-year-old man and injuring five others. It doesn't feel commensurate with the damage that was done, with the mass human carnage that was inflicted, and I think everybody is disappointed that it, it doesn't, it feels like there's a mismatch here. Jessica Speaker has been representing the family who cannot be identified due to a publication ban. Within the ruling, Justice Roberts noted Kerr's previous record, an assault and possession of property obtained by crime when he was 20. And at the time of the collision, Mr. Kerr stood charged with four separate counts of dangerous driving, all of which were alleged to involve flight from police in busy downtown areas of Toronto. They were related to the fall of 2020 and winter 2021. Kerr was able to keep his driver's license in order to make a living. Four dangerous driving charges is shocking and kind of ridiculous and is very preventable. Beyond his previous record, Justice Roberts noted Kerr's lack of accountability, saying he's never mentioned the speed he was going. Instead, he repeatedly refers to the collision as a freak accident. I want to say as clearly and emphatically as I can that this was not a freak accident. And I do not believe that Mr. Kerr accepts the role that his speed played in this mass casualty event. At trial, the victim's mother wrote about her son, who could only be identified as KM, saying... All my dreams of my boys growing old together and having children and big family celebrations with my grandchildren are shattered. I'm told that I need to live my life to the fullest for KM and to honor him, but I don't know how and some days I don't want to. The family was expecting a little bit more justice to be served today. The full sentence for Damar Kerr, four years dangerous driving caused death with pre-trial time served down to one more year in prison. Three years dangerous driving caused bodily harm served concurrently. Three months failed to comply with probation, also concurrent, and a 10-year driving ban. The prosecution in this case had been asking for a six-year term. That would have meant at least two more years in prison. Reporting live, I'm Sean Leethong. Andrea, I'll send it back to you. Thank you, Sean. More details are emerging about the deadly shooting in Regent Park yesterday. The man who's charged with first-degree murder is a son and brother of the victims. CTV's Beth McDonnell has been following the very latest on this. Beth. Nathan, another difficult day here in Regent Park, not just because of the gunfire and the loss of life, but because the victims and the accused are from the same family. As forensic teams work diligently inside the family home, trauma and sadness have taken over this small downtown street one day after the shooting chaos. The mom was bleeding and she said, help, call 911, call 911. And then one mom called 911 and then she said, my child's in there, my child's in there. And then I looked through the window and then I see the child crying. And then I was so scared, like I called the child. She's one year old and she's standing on the stairs and then she wouldn't come. So I have to rush into the house and grab the child. CTV News has learned the victims killed are a father, who neighbors say they know as John Congolo, and his son, with the accused being another son, the mother of the family also injured and hospitalized. Charged with two counts of first-degree murder is 23-year-old Benedict Johnson Congolo. The victims are identified in court documents as Ngoyi Congolo and DJ Congolo. Neighbor Hani Afra says the family moved in at the same time she did 13 years ago. The father is a very kind person, down to earth. He says, good morning, hi, how are you? It's very sad that this has to happen in our community. The family are members of the Congolese Canadian community. A meeting by the Ontario Association is being planned. I would tell you this is a lovely family, a father, mother with the kids. And, uh, but you know, every family has uh, the issue, but it is not part of our culture. We used to live in peace. Even though we are uh, living here in, in this environment where the gun are uh, almost everywhere. So we need to be careful. So we need to review. The violence erupted around 1.30 Tuesday afternoon, starting in the home with gunfire spilling out into the street. I remember I was just studying and I hear like all this jumping noise, a lot of bang, and I just assumed they are playing basketball or something like that. But then, uh, yeah, a bunch of people started running outside. and Area residents are struggling with more than the loss of life. They're calling for better supports, especially when it comes to mental health. The city needs to do better in terms of integration, in terms of inclusiveness, in terms of all of that stuff. Like, it's so important to, like, the community's well-being. Yeah, I've been in contact uh, with the youngest, youngest member of the family who came here and was completely traumatized uh, by seeing so many police officers and not knowing. I don't wish this on anyone. I, I don't, I just.
can't phantom how it feels to come home and realize that uh, you've lost your family members. Benedict Johnson Congolo remains in custody. And he is set to appear in court on March 20th. Reporting live, I'm Beth McDonnell. Nathan, back to you. Thank you, Beth. North of the city, police are searching for a suspect or suspects after a series of shootings at a home in Markham. <laughs> Surveillance video from February 28th shows a man opening fire several times outside a home near Highway 48 and Major Mac. York Regional Police say he then fled in a white car. Shots were fired at the same home once again on March 8th. Nobody was hurt, but the search continues for those responsible. Toronto police are searching for a driver after a crash on Ossington this morning left one person injured. It happened just after 6.30 a.m. between Dundas and Queen Streets. Police say two vehicles were involved and one fled the scene while the other driver was taken to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. There was no description of the vehicle that fled. Roads in the area fully reopened by 9.30. Fire crews in Caledon are battling a large grass fire. Flames broke out in a shed on Bramley Road north of Mayfield at around 3.30 this afternoon. The flames ended up spreading to two nearby barns before beginning to burn grass around the structures. The exact cause of the fire remains under investigation. At Queen's Park, the Ford government will reveal its next budget in just two weeks' time. And the question on the minds of Ontario drivers is whether there'll be any relief at the pumps or whether the provincial gas tax is set to go up. CTV's Natalie Johnson reports. As the cost of living continues to climb, so too does the pressure at the pumps. With increase of the food, rent, and every other cost, the gas is really insane. Especially for us, we, we do um, service calls and we have to keep driving all the time. And that is costing us a lot. And with the province's current gas tax cut set to expire at the end of June, all eyes are on Queen's Park and whether the Ford government will carry on with that cut when it reveals its spending plan in two weeks' time. I know you can't reveal the contents of the budget, but fair to say you're considering extending the cut to the gas tax? You're right. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to reveal what, uh, what I'm doing in the budget, but, you know, you, we've been at this for a while when, when, you know, look, we had interest rates and inflation we haven't seen in decades here. It's, it's hit people hard. The Ford government lowered the gas tax by 5.7 cents a litre in July 2022, which it says has saved the average household about $260. The number one issue in every single poll, doesn't matter what party, who does it, is affordability. Affordable gas, affordable homes, and affordable groceries. It comes as the federal carbon levy is set to rise on April 1st, just days after the province reveals its plans for the gas tax. That seems what uh, one government is uh, is giving, another government is taking. Uh, <laughs> Put it mildly, um, you know, it's it's not a small or insignificant amount. The total hit uh, for consumers on gasoline alone will be 20 cents a litre on April Fool's Day. I do not understand for the life of me what the federal government is, is thinking. This is the worst tax you could ever put on the backs of the people. The Ford government now faced with whether to sacrifice half a billion in revenue to avoid driving away voters. Any tax is a hard sell. I'm running out of money to pay for gas. And I hope somebody will do something about it. We're going to drive no matter what. You know, we maybe not be able to get the high gas, but, you know, we get the low gas. <laughs> A price that is forecasted to keep climbing. The question for the province is by how much. Natalie Johnson, CTV News. Like Doug Ford, Alberta's premier is also opposed to an increase in the carbon tax. And in Calgary today, Danielle Smith had a chance to tell the prime minister that in person. I reiterated the growing opposition to the federal carbon tax, which includes seven premiers, federal members of parliament, and everyday Albertans and Canadians. I went as far as to suggest to the Prime Minister that he could achieve a win if he listened to the growing calls against the carbon tax and reversed his decision to increase the tax, which will amount to about a 23% increase on April 1st. Smith says Canadians are already struggling and insists carbon pricing it adversely impacting inflation, affordability and sustained higher interest rates. But following their meeting, Justin Trudeau defended the consumer carbon charge. Send a clear signal to investors, to companies, to Canadians that it makes good sense to invest in reducing our carbon emissions and saving energy. 
And a price signal is the clearest way of doing that. But the second goal of the price on pollution was to make sure that middle class families and vulnerable families across the country weren't carrying the brunt of that price on pollution. Trudeau says carbon pricing will remain in place. He also pointed out that as the levy increases, so do the rebate checks sent to Canadians. The clock is ticking in the U.S. for TikTok after the House passed a bill which could make TikTok stop. The bipartisan legislation would force TikTok's Chinese parent company to either sell the app or be blocked in America. CTV's Joy Malvin reports. The bill is passed. And with that, lawmakers passed a bill that raises the stakes in the battle over the TikTok app with 170 million users in the U.S. The legislation demands TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, sell the popular social media app or face a ban in the U.S. Users and small businesses who make money off the app are outraged. Save TikTok! You need to make your voices heard. Call them and tell them to stop the ban. Lawmakers argued that the Chinese company is beholden to Beijing, putting users' data at risk. TikTok's pervasive influence among young Americans makes it an ideal tool for the CCP to propagate its narratives. TikTok denies it's an agent of the Chinese government slamming the vote. TikTok is U.S. bullying. But in a heated presidential election year, there are concerns about misinformation being spread. They can make you believe things that are not true. And while President Joe Biden supports the ban... If they pass it, I'll sign it. Even he's on the TikTok. The state of our union is strong. Donald Trump, when he was president, declared TikTok a national security threat, but has since flip-flopped. Without TikTok, you can make Facebook bigger. And I consider Facebook to be an enemy of the people. A big Republican donor is invested in the app, and Trump's former advisor, Kellyanne Conway, is a lobbyist. Canada is watching carefully, and while there's no ban on the books, it could happen. Uh, and if this law does move forward and become law, I would expect something similar in Canada. In the U.S., the bill now heads to the Senate, but the upper chamber doesn't move quickly, and it's more divided on a ban, which may buy some time for TikTok to win over some lawmakers. Joy Malvin, CTV News, Washington. Two employees in the Office of Canada's Auditor General have been fired. Karen Hogan's department is not providing details about the contracts or who issued them, but we do know the two workers were found to have been making money on the side from federal contracts. The third person, a third person, is being investigated. Meanwhile, one of the partners in the main company that worked on the Arrive Can app is disputing how much the Auditor General says it was paid. Is the information that the Auditor General has submitted uh, incorrect? Yes, it is. We actually were asked by the Auditor General to give comment uh, prior to the report being published, whether we could support the numbers that they were putting in there. The federal auditor general says GC Strategies was paid more than $19 million for its work on the controversial app. But today, Christian Firth insisted the firm was paid about $11 million. He says the company kept $2.5 million for commission and the rest went to other contractors. Israel is planning to tell people in Rafah to move to central Gaza ahead of an offensive in the south. 1.4 million displaced Palestinians are crammed into the southern city, and there are fears a military incursion there could be a catastrophe. Israel says civilians would be directed toward, quote, humanitarian islands where there would be temporary housing, food, water, and other necessities. But there was no indication when that would occur or when the offensive might begin. Canada will provide $1 million to assist Palestinian women who've survived sexual violence. Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie made the announcement while in the West Bank, part of her current tour of the Middle East. The funding will go to support victims there and in the Gaza Strip. Earlier this week, Jolie announced the same amount of money for Israeli women who've been victims of sexual violence by Hamas. Ukraine struck Russian oil refineries in a second day of heavy drone attacks. Video shows some of the drones used in the strike about 100 kilometers southeast of Moscow. The Russian military says it destroyed dozens of the weapons over its territory. The two countries frequently use drones to attack each other's critical infrastructure. A plan to begin charting a new path for Haiti could be in jeopardy. 
Prime Minister Ariel Henry announced yesterday he'd resign once a presidential council was created to manage the transition. But now some political parties are rejecting the formation of the panel. They say the decision should come from Haitians and not a group of Caribbean leaders. NASA has unveiled its design for a message heading to one of Jupiter's moons. This commemorative plate will be on board a spacecraft to be launched in October. It is etched with millions of names submitted by the public, as well as poetry and artwork symbolizing humanity. The overall mission is to explore Jupiter's ocean moon, Europa. Still to come, taking to the skies in a brand new aircraft. The Durham Flight Center in Oshawa is showing off some new training technology to assist pilots. And I'm Pat Foran. Coming up on Consumer Alert, no one likes it when an appliance breaks down. And when it happens, you have to make a decision. Are you going to repair it or replace it? Buying new appliances is expensive, but so is fixing them. We have some advice. All of that story just ahead. The warm weather continues into the evening, so you're going to go out for a walk tonight. You won't need too many layers. We're holding on to a lot of this really beautiful weather as we wrap up our Wednesday. Coming up, I'll have a full look at your long range forecast, including the likelihood of seeing a little rain as we head in towards the end of the day. Tomorrow, I'll have all those details coming up right after the break. There's a saying, they just don't make them like they used to, and that seems very true when it comes to many major appliances. Some washers, fridges, and stoves used to last for decades without issues, but now you could have a problem within a few years. Here's Pat Foran and Consumer Alert. Pat. Nathan and Andrea, many older appliances had a lot fewer moving parts, but new ones are more complicated with computer chips, sensors, and circuit boards. If you have a breakdown, you need to decide are you going to repair it or replace it. Consumer Reports has some advice. The 14-year-old washing machine in the Prieto home was on the fritz. I was afraid that if I spent the money to repair it, it would just go out again soon. And frankly, I'm surprised it lasted this long. Instead of paying money to repair the washer, the family headed to a home improvement store to buy a new one. When trying to decide if you should repair or replace, consider the diagnosis and price to fix it, how old the appliance is, the original price when purchased, and how much the appliance is being used. Now, with a refrigerator or something, they're all getting the same amount of usage in a typical household most days. They're on all the time. With a washer, if you live in a family with a lot of children at home, if you're doing a ton of laundry, multiple loads a day, in some cases, even if the washer is only a few years old, it might make more sense to replace it because it's just had that much wear and tear on it. We have a toddler. Well, we do at least one load of laundry a day. But if you paid $1,000 for your washer three years ago and only do a few loads a week, a repair might be the better financial choice. Before calling a repair service, see if there are any recalls on your machine or if there are any simple fixes like a clogged filter or kinked hose. Check if the appliance is still under warranty. And if you decide to search for a repair company, don't take the first one that pops up in a Google search. Consumer Reports recommends going directly to the manufacturer's website where you'll find authorized repair services in your area. If you go with an authorized dealer, you have a little bit of a backup because they back up their work and also they're more likely to get the parts first. Researchers say a formula you can use to help you decide if you should repair or replace something if the repair will cost more than half the price of a new appliance then it's probably better to replace it. And for most appliances, the average lifespan is between 8 and 15 years. You might be able to make them last longer by keeping them clean, not overloading them, and checking the owner's manual to see if they need new filters or other maintenance. On your side, I'm Pat Foran. If you have a consumer story idea, email us at alert at ctv.ca. All right, to the forecast, you know, it's one of those days where you wish you could do the whole newscast outside. Absolutely. But we are not outside, but Jess certainly is. And Jess, I've noticed you've stopped dancing, so I guess you're ready to get down to business. I just, I got to focus. I can't dance a biggie as well as like do the forecast, but it is beautiful outside. We're, it's a little cooler now that the sun is starting to set. It's sitting around 17 degrees, a little bit more of a breezy west northwesterly wind, but to be honest, it's still really beautiful outside. Folks are still out here in shorts, rollerblading. I saw a kayaker a few minutes ago. People are enjoying their time outside in this really kind of mild March break, quite literally. Uh, temperatures today well exceeding the seasonal norm, and that's going to continue as we head into the end of the week, even with some active weather on the way. Temperature wise, it is going 
going to remain quite mild through the rest of our evening and it's going to stay nice into the end of the week. Weather is brought to you by Train, the most affordable heating and cooling brand. It's hard to stop a train. Now we're still pretty close into the teens. We're into kind of right around 19 degrees to some areas. We're at 20 through Windsor, 18 in Trenton, 17 here in the city. And you add in that little bit of a breeze down here by the water. At least it's a little fresh, but still really comfortable, even in a t-shirt. Overnight, we are going to drop down to the single digits for our low. It's still above seasonal, though, sitting right around three degrees. It'll feel like minus four. Peterborough, we should be at minus eight. We're not going to quite be there. Really right across the board, it is staying quite mild, although the cloud cover does move in. Heading into the day tomorrow, another double digit day. It's just not going to be a 20 degree type of day. We're sitting around 11. The seasonal norm is four. The seasonal norm through Waterloo is three. The seasonal norm over through Bancroft is three. Everybody comfortably above that seasonal average. The difference is, though, as the winds pick up and we watch the system kind of roll in, we're looking at showers into the afternoon along with the risk of some thunderstorm activity. A ridge of high pressure has kept us relatively clear throughout our day today, but that changes as we head into the early afternoon tomorrow as that low pushes through, again, bringing that thunderstorm risk as we head into the early evening. Timing everything out, we'll go through our forecast radar picture tonight. Not much in the way of any active weather, at least through southern Ontario, but as we get into the start of the day tomorrow, it moves in. Dry for that morning commute, the rain rolls through right around 3 o'clock and then heavier still as we get in towards 6 p.m. along with that embedded thunderstorm risk. It moves out though as we get right through midnight and then as we head into our Friday, we do get a little bit of a clearing and we'll see a mix of sun and cloud and a really beautiful end to the week. I know heading into March break, it's been a busy one. A lot of folks are maybe staying local or they're traveling, trying to enjoy their time outside. Uh, today, it was beautiful. We almost broke our record. We were shy by about 1.3 degrees. It doesn't matter. It was still really pretty outside. Getting into our Thursday, down to 11 and 5 for that low. That chance of showers rolls in through the afternoon again, heavier through the overnight. It clears out, though, just in time for Friday. Saturday looking really nice as well, but those overnight lows getting a little fresh, dropping down to just one. Heading in towards our Sunday, St. Patrick's Day, if you're heading out celebrating, or maybe not. Uh, Temperature-wise, it's a little bit cooler, even still. We're at 6 for the high, minus 6 for the low. And then we're watching for the chance of a little rain, even a little mixing as we get through our afternoon on Sunday. Not a wash of a day, but a good idea to give yourself extra travel time into the second half of your Sunday. It clears out just in time for Monday, but it is going to be cool. Looking ahead to Tuesday, the official start, the astronomical start to the spring season. It is going to get a little bit chilly out there, but to be fair, we have had such a mild start to the spring season, so it's a little bit of a trade-off, but regardless, I'll take the 20 degrees today and the plus one as we welcome in the spring season. I'll send things back inside. All right. Thank you, Jess. Still to come, how getting active can benefit your brain. We'll have more on the link between exercise and brain health when we come back. Emergency crews are battling a large grass fire near the Toronto Zoo. These shots are from the CTV news chopper. Flames were first reported near Old Finch Avenue and Meadowvale Road around 6 p.m. So far, there's been no indication of a potential cause. The latest research into the link between brain health and exercise suggests that lactic acid may play a big role in maximizing the brain's function. Our health reporter Pauline Chan has more details. Jennifer Heise's work at McMaster University has looked at how exercise can help stave off dementia. One of the main goals of the research in my lab, the NeuroFit Lab at McMaster University, is to develop these prescriptions for exercise for brain health. They studied dozens of seniors aged 60 to 88 who began either steady walking programs or walking with intervals of high intensity walking. And it turned out that that interval walking was particularly good at improving memory especially for seniors. In fact, they had a 30% gain in memory function after just three months, and it seems lactic acid, or lactate, may be the key difference. As we exercise at higher intensities, we have this accumulation of lactate in the muscles. Lactate spills out into the bloodstream, travels to the brain, across the blood-brain barrier, and reports to the hippocampus, which is the main brain region for learning and memory. So why not create a way to pump lactic acid into the human body, as has been tested in animals. Turns out the key to stimulating new brain cell growth is not so simple. One thing that exercise provides over and above the physical health benefits is this social connection. This social connection with other people, creating like an exercise family. High says we are at our peak cognitive abilities in our 30s, so that should be when we start using exercise more to slow that decline. And every workout that causes an increase in lactate in our systems helps. So it's important to find an activity you enjoy and will do as often as possible. 
Pauline Chan, CTV News. We have a new advisory about a case of measles, and if you're at Terminal 3 at Pearson Airport on March 5th, we have some information you want to hear. Hamilton Public Health says a child traveled through Pearson a week ago Tuesday, late in the afternoon. Again, that was March 5th. The child was on a Saudi Arabian Airlines flight number SV-61 from Jeddah. The flight landed around 3.25 p.m. Officials say if you were in Terminal 3 between 3.25 p.m. and 8.30 p.m., you may have been exposed. Eight cases of measles have been reported in Ontario so far this year. Public health agencies are urging members of the public to check their immunization records to ensure they and other family members are up to date with their measles vaccinations. Screen and comedy star Olivia Munn is opening up about her health. She took to Instagram today saying, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I hope by sharing this, it will help others find comfort, inspiration and support on their own journey. Munn shared details of how her condition was identified and posted a few images of her time in hospital. She revealed she underwent a double mastectomy and signed off thanking them for thanking her care team, friends, and loved ones for their support. Canadian music icon Neil Young is coming back to Spotify. Come a little bit closer, hear what I have to say. Young pulled his music from the streaming service in 2022 in protest of Joe Rogan spreading vaccine misinformation on his podcast. Now that Rogan's podcast is no longer exclusive to Spotify, Young says he can't boycott all streaming services, so he's letting Spotify users listen to his tracks once again. We now know the release date for a new project from the creator of the beloved children's TV show, Arthur. And I say, hey, hey, what a wonderful kind of day. It's been just over two years since the show from author and illustrator Mark Brown went off the air. He later announced plans for a new series called Hop. The show follows a group of friends learning to embrace their unique attributes. Deadline now reports the series will start streaming in the U.S. on April 4th. No word on when it might be released in Canada. A new trailer is out for Taylor Swift's Eras Tour concert film. The trailer also revealed a special acoustic performance that will be included in the movie Swift song Death by a Thousand Cuts. The Eras Tour, Taylor's version, was originally set to debut Friday, but now it starts streaming on Disney Plus tomorrow evening. Top of the morning to you. St. Patrick's Day is approaching and will help you get into the spirit of the celebrations with some authentic Irish dancing. CP24 Breakfast, where Toronto gets its everything every morning. driver took off and then it ended in this uh, collision. It was uh, at a high rate of speed. The driver of a stolen vehicle is dead following a collision in Scarborough. The driver fled from a traffic stop in the area of Markham and Milner around 6.30 a.m. before getting involved in a collision with five other vehicles. One other person remains in hospital in critical condition. When I heard the gunshot, I came out and then the mom was bleeding and she said, help, call 911. John Congolo has been identified as one of the victims of yesterday's deadly shooting near Dundas in Parliament. 23-year-old Benedict Johnson Congolo is facing two counts of first-degree murder in the death of his father and brother. His mother was also injured in the shooting. Carbon tax. Carbon tax is the worst tax you could ever put on the backs of the people. As the mayor acknowledged, uh, the number one issue in every single poll, doesn't matter what party, who does it, is affordability. The Premier has come out strongly against the federal carbon tax, but the Ford government has not indicated whether it will extend its gas tax cut when it reveals its budget in two weeks' time. The current cut of 5.7 cents per litre is set to expire at the end of June. Remember to keep up to date day and night through our website, ctvnewstoronto.ca. And if you have a news tip, photos, or video of breaking news, let us know. New data shows that Canadian households were wealthier in the fourth quarter. BNM Bloomberg's Amber Canoir has more. 
The value of financial assets held by Canadians has hit a record high to end the year. According to StatsCan, the value of stocks and bonds held by Canadians has hit $10 trillion. Canadians have benefited from rising financial assets even as the price of real estate has moderated. When you include the value of real estate, the national net worth per capita is nearly 454000 which is higher than the previous quarter, but below levels seen a year ago. Now here's a look at the closing market numbers. The Canadian dollar held in at around 74 cents U.S. U.S. oil prices advanced by $2 per barrel, while Canadian oil prices dipped slightly to just below $62 per barrel. And it was a big update on the TSX, surging nearly 140 points. That's the latest in business. I'm Amber Canwar in the BNN Bloomberg Newsroom. The Business Report is brought to you by Canadian Western Bank, the bank built for business. A new report suggests the majority of Canadian workers would leave their jobs this year if they could. The findings were shared by a recruitment firm, Hayes. It found 71% of employees are considering leaving their jobs sometime over the next 12 months. That number jumps to 78% in a scenario where the economy and unemployment stabilize. Hayes said the survey reveals growing discontent among workers over wages that often don't keep up with inflation and a lack of other incentives like promotions and benefits. Bell says it's trying a new tactic to prevent increasing theft from, of copper from its network infrastructure. The company says it has started installing aerial alarms across its network that can alert law enforcement as soon as a theft is detected. Bell's also calling for harsher criminal punishments for those found responsible. Bell says copper theft makes up 87% of physical security breaches on its network. 55% of those take place in Ontario. CTV News Toronto is a division of Bell Media. The Toronto Raptors will be looking to snap a four-game losing streak tonight. Porter, the open three. Sticks it. Toronto's coming off a loss to the Nuggets on Monday. Tonight, they're in Detroit to take on the Pistons. R.J. Barrett will miss the game for personal reasons. The Raptors are also without Scotty Barnes and Jakob Pertl. Maple Leaf forward Bobby McMahon is being rewarded for a strong play this season. The Alberta native has signed a two-year, $2.7 million contract extension. Undrafted out of Colgate, McMahon originally joined the Leafs organization as a free agent in 2020. The 27-year-old centerman has 10 goals and 8 assists this season. Tonight, wild boars in Canada threatening to spill south of the border. The consequences of even one Canadian pig moving into the U.S. can be very, very high. The super pig spreading out of control. That story and more later on CTV National News. As airlines continue to deal with a shortage of pilots, the Durham Flight Centre in Oshawa is helping to meet the need, providing training on single and twin engine aircraft. The school has added to their training fleet with a new, cleaner and quieter airplane. CTV multimedia journalist Ted Brooks has more. Beautiful day, y'all, isn't it? Yeah, it's looking good. Yeah. yeah. This is the P2006T Technam uh, twin engine airplane. Check the propeller for Nick's signs of oil. So this airplane is really exciting for a number of reasons. It's, it's a lot more user-friendly in some ways. It's going to be a much easier transition for students who are moving from a single-engine airplane into the multi-engine airplane. Ready to start on the left. Yep. Bare left. Yep. Uh, the aircraft that it's replacing, uh, the engines in it are much, more, uh, much higher horsepower, which means they turn bigger propellers, and most of the noise comes from the airplane propeller. And so this aircraft here, nice small propellers on it, so it's very quiet. Tango, Oscar Tango, left turn out, clear for takeoff from we want to. Clear takeoff, Tango, Oscar Tango. It burns about one third of the fuel, so that means less hydrocarbon in the air. It runs on MOGAS, which is unleaded fuel, so we take the lead out of the fuel. So an aircraft like this is a real game changer for us. It handles very easily. You don't have the same complex systems of the past. The benefit of this aircraft in terms of uh, having the aircraft accessible and reli re, um, reliable because a lot of these old trainers spend a lot of their time in the shop. It's a big deal to replace an aircraft, to start to replenish a fleet. Um, aircraft are not inexpensive and so again it's just a really big deal and we're very pleased to see it uh, starting here in Oshawa. 
Oh, this plane uh, handles really good. It's uh, easy to fly, uh, good visibility, really quiet, and uh, so nice to be flying in a modern airplane. Mm, looks like it'll be a good night for a flight. And Jess joins us now with the final look at the weather. Still 17 degrees as we head through the early part of our evening. Beautiful outside. The sun just starting to set behind a lot of the buildings here in the city, but it's still a ton of people out here enjoying the beautiful kind of end to our day down by the water here at HTO Park. Now, right across the board, still quite mild. We're sitting at 20 through Windsor, 19 in Niagara, 18 in Hamilton, and 15 through Peterborough. As we kind of head throughout the day tomorrow, it stays mild, but we're watching a low that's been kind of building its way up from uh, kind of around Colorado, making its way towards us, and we'll start in towards that southwestern corner tomorrow making its way into the GTA through the kind of midpoint of our afternoon. Not a wash, you know, of a day. We still get some sunshine in the morning, but through that second half of our Thursday, we see the rain roll in along with the risk of some thunderstorm activity. 11 for the high, 5 for the low, getting into Friday. Mix of sun and cloud, a little 10 degrees, kind of holding on there, and that's double digits, but we're going to see a little bit of a cool down just in time for the weekend. Not cold by any means, holding on above seasonal still, but it does get quite cold as we head in towards Sunday night, dipping below seasonal for the first time in a little <laughs> over a few weeks weeks and for St. Patrick's Day it might be a little fresh for those out there. We're also watching for the chance of just a little mixing so keep that in mind for your St. Patrick's Day or your end of weekend plans. Looking ahead to the astronomical start of the spring season on Tuesday next week although it is going to be sunny it is going to be cool so just keep that in the back of your mind and layer up accordingly. I'll send things back inside. Thanks Jess. Be sure to join Omar Sachedina tonight at 11 for the CTV National News followed by Zoraida Allman with our next local newscast at 11.30. In the meantime, our coverage continues anytime on CP24 and online at ctvnewstoronto.ca. For Jessica Smith and all of us here at CTV News, thanks for watching and have a good night.